Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study manual for T. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. By the 2020-2021 edition, you will find it at the official website of the ATI people, people who make the exam. Today we'll, today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 136. These problems deal with the concept of order of operations. And after having done some problems with me, if you feel that you need some more practice, as I've told you in the previous five videos, there is a series of videos on my channel called Basic Math. Just type in, to always put in my name, otherwise you'll have, you may have difficulty finding it, just type in Keshwani. Just type in Keshwani, basic math, day 46, and then day 47. These two videos will help you uh, get some more practice on this topic. Order of operations. What exactly the, is the order of operations? Well, order of operations is exactly what it says. There are four basic arithmetic operations in the math, and, and four basic mathematical operations. The multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. In addition to these four basic operations, there are a couple of others that we to deal with, which are parentheses and exponents. Now, when all of these things appear in a given, given situation, the question is, which one do we do first? Because otherwise, it can cause confusion. For example, for example, let me give you one very simple example. If I give you, say for example, 3 plus uh, uh, 5, times, uh, 5 times 2, that's the quantity we're dealing with. You sit there and you do this. And you come up with the answer of 13, and I sit there and I do this. I come up with the answer of 16. I do 3 plus 5 is 8, and then I do times 2, 8. Who's right? Well, it turns out that there's a potential for confusion. So we have all agreed on the entire planet, not just one nation or two nations, and the entire planet, all the people and all the mathematics that we do, we have agreed on some rules. And those rules are these right here. It tells you in which order we should go so that everybody does the same thing on the planet and there is no confusion. It's like having laws. It's like having a traffic laws. The reason we have traffic laws is to avoid confusion and avoid the chaos on the, on the, on the road, just like any other, any other situation. That's why we have rules. These are the rules. We must follow these rules always because everybody does the same way and that way everybody comes up with the same answer. Do you understand? And if you do it... If you don't follow these rules, then the answer that you will come up with will be considered wrong because it violates the norm. So let's enough of the talk. Let's let's do a few examples. On page number on page number one thirty six, if you turn to it, there are some very simple examples in the book. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Here's example number one. It says three plus five times nine. We just talked about a situation like this. We just talked about it. So do I do 3 plus 5, 8 and then do times 9 or do I do 5 times 9 and then do plus 3? Well, we have to follow this thing here. First we do parentheses. There are no parentheses here. First we do parentheses. There are no parentheses here so we don't have to worry about it. Then we do the exponents. There are no exponents here. Ah, oh, there we go. We have to do multiplication first. Before we worry about the addition, we have to do multiplication first. So let's do that. Right here is the multiplication. 5 nines are 45. So it's 3 plus 45. And now we come up with the answer of 48, and there is no, there is no worry about any causing any confusion, because everybody on the whole planet, when given this quantity, when given this situation, will come up with the same result. Let's do next one. Number two. It says 24 divided by 3 minus 5. Again, the same thing. Division comes before subtraction. So we'll do division first, 24 divided by 3 is 8, and 8 minus 5 is 3. Nothing to it, very simple, very straightforward. Number 3, it says 18 minus 7 times 4. So here we have a situation, we see multiplication and the parentheses. Which one do we do first? For right here, we do the parentheses first. For very first thing we do is take care of all the parentheses. Parentheses, everything that appears in the parentheses, that, that, that is taken care of first. 
So let's do that. 18 minus 7 would be 11. There you go. 11 times 4 would be simply 44. Would be 44. Let's do example number 4. Of course, as we go a little bit higher, they're going to get a little bit more complicated. Example, example number 4. It says 5 plus 7 times 4 plus 8 in the parentheses divided by 6 minus 9. There we go. The simplest, easiest, and the most assured way is to always make sure that you go step by step. Uh, don't try to be a wise guy and try to skip steps or try to do two steps together. That's where the potential lies of making an error. Or what is known as, or what is known as, as in the in the world of mathematics as boo boos. We don't want boo boos. Do you understand? Let's get going, shall we? First, the parentheses. First, the parentheses right here. That's the thing we're going to do first. So five plus seven times twelve divided by six minus nine. Then comes the multiplication right here. Then comes the multiplication right here. These two quantities. So we'll end up with 5 plus 7 times 12. 7 times 12. How much is 7 times 12? Oh, don't look at me. I don't know. 7 times 12. Well, there you go. 10 times, 10 times 7 would be 70. And 2 times 7 would be 14. 84. Divided by 6 minus 9. And now at this stage we have addition, division, subtraction. We do division next. Division comes next before we worry about addition and subtraction. So we have to divide 86 by 84 by 6. Let's do it here. 84 divided by 6. How many 6 does 8 have? 8 has 1 6. 8 only has 1 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? That 2 goes and joins this 4 and becomes a 24. And 24 has 4 6s. There we go. It's 16. This quantity right here is 16. Now, if you had trouble, if you just had trouble, oh, 24, 24 is made up of nuts. Uh, I said four sixes, but then I wrote down six. 24 has four sixes. 24 has four sixes. Let's do one more time, and this time I'm going to do it the long hair so you can actually follow the language. Okay, here we go. 84 divided by six. Okay, follow, follow, follow the marker and follow, follow the language. How many? Let's begin, shall we? How many sixes does 8 have? 8 has only one six. 8 has only one six. How many six does 8 have? 8 has only one six. 8 has only one six. After we take away the six from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? That 2 goes and joins the 4 and becomes 24. That 2 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 24. And now 24 has four sixes. There we go. So that's it, we're almost done. 5 plus, 5 plus 16 is going to be 21. 21 minus 9, 21 minus 10 would have been 11, so it's going to be 12, I believe. 21. Oh, it's 14, I never changed it. We, 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 we agreed that it is 14. So 5 plus 14 is 19, 19 minus 9 is 10. That was number 4. Let's do number 5. Number five, which is the very last one on the page. It says eight minus four divided by five minus three times three plus eleven. So again, first thing first, very first thing we do is the parentheses. So we have, and make sure you write down there. It takes time to write everything down, but that's the best way to go. That's the, that's the smartest way to go. That's the safest way to go. Not only you write down everything, but you always make sure you line up everything properly. Don't write it all over the place. Line up properly so it's easier on your eyes to, look, to find things. And then 5 minus 2 would simply be 2 times 3 plus 11. What do we do next? We have division, we have multiplication. So what do we do next? 
when we have division, listen carefully. When we have here's here's the situation. Here's the situation. We have we have division and we have multiplication. And it says multiplication and division. You see the these two multiplication and division, they both have the same priority. And similarly, addition and subtraction, they have the both same priority. So then the question is, what do you do if, if, when, when they both appear in the, in the situation? And the answer to that question is, you always go from left to right. Left to right, that's the norm. Left to right. So even though here is this multiplication and then division, it looks like we should do this first and then worry about division. The answer is no. If you did that way, it will be wrong. Since we have to contend with the division and multiplication, which one do we do first? They have the same priority. We, do, we go from left to right. So we do this one first. 8 minus 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 3 plus 11. And now we do the multiplication. There we go. 8 minus 6 will be 2. 2 plus 11 is 13. And that's all it is. That's how simple it is. Do you understand? That was the end of that page. That was the end of page number 136. On the next page there are two more problems. On page number 137, let's take care of them as well. 6 and 7. Example number 6 and 7. We are on the next page, page 137. Here's number 6. It says 225 divided by 3 plus 2 times 11 in the parenthesis minus 4. Let's see what we can do first, okay? I, I believe I copied it down correctly. Let's see what we can do. First, the parenthesis. Parenthesis comes first, but then treat this as quantity in itself and then we look everything inside and we decide once we so we are going this this is first but if more than one operation appear in the parenthesis then we go and dissolve again so we are in the parenthesis and we do multiplication first because multiplication appears before before addition so we're going to do this part first so we end up with 3 plus 22 minus 4 and just rewrite everything don't be lazy there we go 225 divided by 3 plus 25, 3 plus 22 is 25 minus 4. Now we do the division. 20, 225 divided by 25, 250 by uh, 200, 250 divided by 25 would have been 10. This would have been 10. 250 because it's just 10 times the amount. 225 is 25 less than 250, so it's 9. 9 minus 4, which is 5. The answer is 5. Let's do number 7, shall we? Number 7. Number 7 says, Number 7 says 47 minus 5 over 5 plus 9. 47 minus 5. So when, it, when there is a situation like this, when, when the quantity appears in the form of a fraction, we do the numerators and denominators separately, as if they were two separate problems. We do them separately, and then we, whatever the numerator is, we divide by denominator. So 47 minus 5 would be 42 and 5 plus 9 is 14 so we have to figure out what 42 divided by 14 is let's divide top and bottom by 2 4 has 2 twos, 2 has 1 twos, 14 has 7 twos. there we go and let's divide top and bottom by 7 7 goes away becomes a 1 and 21 has 3 there you go so 21 has 3 sevens so, so the answer is 3 the answer is straightforward 3 let's do let's do so that's the end of that page. That was the end of that page. Number seven was the last one there. Let's do a few more. Let's do two or three more. These are bonus problems. These are not in the book. Don't don't look for don't don't try to look for them. They are not. They don't exist in the book. 
Number 8. 3 plus 4 times 4 plus 7. Now it may not hurt at this point. It may not hurt at this point to pause the video and do this problem yourself first. Go ahead and do it. Pause the problem and do it yourself first. Here we go. We do the parenthesis first. So here we have a parenthesis. Here we have a parenthesis within a parenthesis. Here we have a parenthesis here. And within the parenthesis we have another parenthesis. So which one do we do first? Obviously the innermost one. We start from the innermost and work, work our way out. So we do this parenthesis first. We're going to end up with and rewrite this one just the way it is. 4 plus 7 is 11. And then there we go. So now again 3 plus 4 times 11 is 44. You see how I'm doing it? And 44 plus 3 is 47. The answer is answer is 47. Let's do one more. Eight, nine, and ten, as I told you before, they are not in the book. Five minus two whole squared plus six. Okay? Don't say don't say five minus two squared. Five minus two squared is this quantity. This is different than what we have here. What we have here is this. And this is read as this is read as five minus two whole squared. Whole tells the person, whole tells the listener that everything that I said before, the whole thing has to be squared. 5 minus 2, whole squared. Not just 5 minus 2 squared. These are two different quantities. 5 minus 2 whole squared. So we do the parenthesis first. 5 minus 2 is 3. So it's 3 squared plus 6. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's do the next one. Number 10. 18 divided by 6 in the parenthesis times 4 minus 8 plus 3 times 5 minus 9. Pause the video and do it yourself. It's very important that you try it yourself, okay? Alright, if you did post the video, if you did uh, heed to my advice and did the problem yourself, then I'm telling you that the answer to this problem is going to be 10. And if you got something other than 10, if your answer is different than 10, if you want to try it again, be my guest. So let's get going, shall we? So if you want to try it again, post the video one more time and do it again, obviously. Let's do the parenthesis first. So that's just going to be 3 times 4 minus 8 plus 3 times 5 minus 9. Let's do this multiplication. 3 times 4 is going to be 12 minus 8 plus, and there is another multiplication. There is no, there is no reason why, can, why, we, why, why can, we cannot take care of them in the same step. If you could rewrite and do it again, but it's the same thing. It's not going to change anything. It's 15 minus 9. It's not going to affect the order of anything. And that's it. At this point, you can do them out, 12 minus 8 plus 15, all in one shot. I like to do, break it up to make, make it easier. So what we are about to do next has nothing to do with the order of operation. What I'm about to do next has nothing to do with the order of operation. It's simply for my own convenience. Just so that it's easier for me to do the arithmetic. So 12 minus 8 is 4 and 15 minus 9 is 6. I don't want you to think I don't want you to think that they have to be do 2 to 2 and 2. There is no such thing. I'm just doing it because it makes it easier to do the work. So it's 10, you see? So that was number 10. We're going to stop right here. Tomorrow when we come back, we'll do the problems that you find. So we, we just finished page number 137. If you turn the page on page number 138, there are some exercises. We'll do those tomorrow. All right? If you wish to get hold of me, if you find this helpful, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, uh, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get ready for the exam, you can always reach me by simply sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.